like our people of Ghana in West Africa celebrate a festival in August that constitutes a month-long period of Thanksgiving known as Homo, the Harvest Festival. The Ga people are believed to have migrated from Nigeria. One school of thought has it that they were part of the Israelite dispersion that journeyed southwards in Africa through Uganda, then traversed the Congo River westwards through Cameroon, Nigeria, Benin, Togo, and finally settled in their present home in the Great Accra region. The festival is celebrated to recall the trials and eventual success of the Ga people in overcoming a severe famine which faced them during their journey from their ancestral home to their current abode. term homo wo, homo meaning hunger and wo hoot means to literally hoot or jeer at hunger or to make fun of hunger in the Ga language. <laughs> I'm 
During this period of adversity, the Gas gathered courage to till the land, cultivate corn, and call upon their God through libation to bless them with an abundant harvest. Can claim one double she, your bono momo woman, Kebashi, men at Bine, won't be a ke be Kafi nature or here, or few was here, and I know, eh? The rain that followed is believed to have been an answer to their prayers. The Homo festival is therefore a celebration of victory over the hunger they encountered. The preparation for the festival begins with the cultivation of crops ahead of the rainy season in May each year. Homo is joyfully celebrated by all the towns in the Gas State, with the celebrations climaxing in Gamashi. <laughs> The celebration begins with the preparation of the special meals called pokwe or pekwe, made from unfermented corn powder and eaten with palm nut soup. <laughs> jeered at hunger as they ate bukwe with palm nut soup, prepared with fish as the only source of protein, notably chili and oda, offered libation and also offered some of the meal symbolically to the gods and ancestral spirits or sisaji. <laughs> The 
as it was sprinkled in the town. This was normally done by traditional leaders and family heads. <laughs> Homawok is celebrated every year in the month of August and September to commemorate that fateful day when hunger was defeated and hooted at. The main objective of this festival is to commemorate the success of the Gap people in fighting famine. The date for the celebration in the various traditional areas is determined by the Council of Wulume, which stands in for the numerous traditional localities. Nungwa is normally the first community to commence the celebration of Homo because the people of that township are believed to have been the first gas to set foot in Ghana, followed by the people of Gamashi. The last community to celebrate Homo is Teshi, which was established in 1710 after a breakaway from La made it the youngest gas settlement. There are a series of rituals which precede the festive season. The first ritual, called Bemlila, locking the way, is performed in the month of June and bans strumming and music. This enables people to concentrate on their farms. After this comes another ritual called Inshobulimu, which appeases the sea gods for a bumper sea catch of fish. The final ritual, Okomfenana prohibits fishing in the lagoons until the Homo festival is over. 
When the date for a traditional area's home war celebration draws near, the people of that area are expected to return to their homes in the capital town. Thursday marks the arrival of returning citizens and they are called Sobi or Thursday people. Most people arrive with their harvested maize and palm nuts amidst merrymaking. Friday is devoted to remembrance of those who passed on in the course of the year. In the early hours of Tuesday, the revered day for the sea, when maritime activities, fishing, swimming and so forth are forbidden, Pukwe, now called Pukwe, and palm nut soup are cooked for the feasting. The Manche, or chief of the traditional area, clan heads, family heads, and other elders offer libation to Mau, Sisaji, Jemawoji, and Woji, and sprinkle white pukwe mixed with palm nut soup to these deities to thank them for their sustenance and also to invoke their blessings over the feasting period. The Twins Yam Festival begins early on Friday morning in all compounds which have resident twins. The Nai Wulomo, or chief priest, is the first to prepare the bow or concoction before the various houses where twins reside can take the turn. This is necessary because he has to seek permission on behalf of all the twins of the traditional area from the gods. The Nai Wulomo, dressed in white, begins by reciting rhythmic prayers with a corresponding response hiao, hiao, meaning may it be so. After the prayers, libation is offered and poetry and other lyrical sayings believed to gain the admiration and approval of the gods are recited. A tube of yam is cut into small pieces and placed at all entry and exit points of the shrine, believed to invoke the presence of benevolent spirits to the ceremony. According to the priest, there are seven different kinds of herbs used to prepare the twins concoction, namely Anyone, Hiaba, Yangyana, Adibli, Agure, Chalai, and Lili. As the chief priest recites some prayers and sings, he carefully mixes these herbs with seawater, schnapps, and eggs. The bow or concoction is prepared in a decorated bowl called Cheche and it is believed to induce fertility. In the African tradition, children are seen as blessings from God, and when these blessings are doubled in the form of twins, their family has to play a spiritual role by appeasing the spirits that they represent. One of the ways that this is done is through the Aquile Suma festival, also known as the Yeyeyeye festival. During the Aquile Suma festival, the twins will have a special spirit bath with specific ingredients that will clean them from any unwanted spiritual residue. The twins will then have a special meal cooked for them and be pampered to appease the twin spirits. Once it is done, the remnants from the spiritual bath are put in a bowl ready to be thrown away at the entrance of the lagoon, Kole Nabu. The task of carrying this waste to the appointed place is usually carried out by a nominated person, but anybody could volunteer. The twins are then dressed beautifully and taken from their homes to their collie. The person carrying the remnants may become possessed by the spirits and usually will stay possessed until it is disposed of. This act represents the discarding of all things unclean and evil. On the way back, the twins will continue to be fitted, as the belief is that a happy twin spirit means a happy home for the coming year. The celebration of Homo War has led to conflicting opinions by people of different religious persuasions. Ga traditionalists and some Christians believe that there is nothing wrong with the celebration of Homo War. Others are of the opinion that Homo War, like many other African festivals, has pagan roots and so should not be celebrated by Christians. Let us explore these views further. Uh, La Homo is the most unique. Uh, I wouldn't say in the Gandangwe area, but the whole of um, Ghana. And rich in coastal. We start in May, right after Easter. We call something our call Nwe. That is picking, literally, picking palm note, palm kennel. Right after this, we start picking, and that will tell us when we start the next omo. So right after Easter, we start uh, our omo, 
we start with what is called blahedru that is cleansing of uh, brooms that is we clean all the shrines we pacify the shrines and then after that we do what is called water drama that is to slaughter uh, ships and goods for blessings of the various shrines after that we have what you call madumo our madumo is not like what happens in gamashi and osu which is akin to their ban on noise making and drumming ours is a custom which doesn't relate to ban on noise making and drumming as far as it is within the context of Ghana culture, you know, I as a Christian accept it. In the same way as I, I, I was born and bred a Christian, so naturally some of these uh, cultural practices I find um, unacceptable, you know. But I don't condemn it wholesale. It is only certain features and aspects of the festival, which incidentally uh, you'll find these features within the worldview and practices and the cultural practices, traditional practices of the Ga people. And so Homo comes to a close for another year. Whatever your opinion on its origins and its meaning, there can be no doubt as to its cultural significance not only to the Ga people, but also its appeal to residents of their towns, tourists and other visitors.
Yeah, man.